to the small talk about uh, uh, as it is here, uh, sustainable design, but it's going to be mostly about uh, my uh, personal experience in approaching this uh, quite complicated matter as uh, like pursuing to, to make a sustainable design and not only because in this presentation I'm also addressing the things related with uh, social aspects so uh, there's going to be a sustainable design and social aspects. Um, let me make a full screen. So it's going to be more visible as this here. Uh, okay, so this is a more scope about uh, what is that about. So it's going to be quickly, it's going to be like half an hour, maybe 45 minutes maximum. So I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about the first uh, approach when I came to Asia and uh, how did I meet the architecture here, how did I, how did I found uh, China itself and then I'm going to go through uh, different kind of strategies. Those are not uh, really like a professional standard names of the strategies of the approach. It's just more about uh, uh, my own, my own uh, experience and my own naming of, of the strategies. And, uh, and each strategy has a sub-strategy, but I will get there soon. So uh, first, uh, I want to uh, tell you about the guy uh, whose name is James Hutton. He was living in the 18th century, and he was a geologist. He was, uh, uh, he was uh, researching about the soil, about the history of the Earth, and how to really approach the, the planet itself. And he was the first person in the world who actually came across with the, with, uh, with the notion of, uh, of, of, the, of the body, that uh, our, our planet is actually, uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's a one body. It's like a one biological body. And, uh, and his idea evolved into the, the more advanced ideas of, for example, Goya. Which is uh, which is a name of the, of the planet as a one as a one single body. So every every uh, every every living bodies in the in the planet, they are forming one big body. So we are only the small cells inside the Goya body. And James Hutton was the first. And as you see here, this uh, you recognize that this is uh, your country. Uh, Why no, Taiwan? <laughs> if you look a little bit here, you will see that uh, uh, many places. I will, I will talk about that. Uh, then the, some places here they really remind uh, the, the biological body. They, they, they look like a like a like a veins, like a, like this is for example section of the of the hand how the, the blood stream system works, blood circulation. And uh, this idea of, of Goya and, and Medea is that planet is like an organism, cities are like bodies, like, a, like organs, like a hand, like a heart, like a liver, and the, and the people are like a single cells, you know, the blood cells or skin cells or something like that. And the uh, Goya, the idea of Goya is that uh, Goya will, will survive, that the Goya is a body which is letting us to, to survive as uh, si simple cells. But Medea, Medea was a mytholo mythological uh, character. It was a mother who was, sw who was eating her own babies. And uh, there is another theory opposite to the theory of, of Goya, that there is Medea. That the, that the Medea is actually creating this, this world and is going to eat itself. And uh, for to extend this one, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, cordyceps. It's a mushroom. The mushroom is uh, most popular uh, in over 4,000 meters uh, in, uh, in Tibet, in the high mountains. It's very expensive. I don't know. The, 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 the Chinese name is something like a grass, grass, uh, earth, earth. Yeah, 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 and it's it's very it's very interesting mushroom. Oh, it's it's this one. Yeah. So so this mushroom. So this mushroom. So this this mushroom is actually uh, 
growing, as you know, it's inside the, the caterpillars. It's growing inside another body. So there is, for example, me. If I'm infected with this mushroom, this mushroom is starting to control me from the inside. The, this insect, this insect which is here, this is actually the caterpillar. It's going to be normally it's going to be a uh, butterfly in the future, but uh, but the mushroom is infecting that inside. It can in infect also the the, the ants, for example. It controls the behavior of the ants. So the ant is climbing on the trees and dying there, for example. So so this this idea of Goa and Medea is related with uh, with uh, with Goya, which is uh, representing the living bodies. And, and this is something which is affecting that from the inside. The, 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 the concrete, pollution, the, everything which is uh, like trying to get uh, the benefit out of, uh, out of human, out of naturality. So uh, this, is, this is also for me representing a little bit of, of, uh, of Medea. And I don't know if you are familiar with, uh, with the, the movie The Wall. Do you remember that? I'm glad that you don't remember it because uh, I want to I want to play this movie for you. <laughs> uh, just a second. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is this is only very very small shortcut of of this. Of of this. It's London. You, you see anything or it's, it's too light, huh? Uh, these coming buildings like which are like covering everything around and uh, uh, consumerism that uh, I want to have uh, cars I want to have uh, stereo and computers and everything and then um, the mass of the people which is following this and the wall which is growing between because of that It's a, it's a very good movie. There is a, like a small part of the animation which I extract from the movie, just to just to remind you or show you because uh, I, didn't, I didn't know actually if you know that. I didn't know actually if you know that. So it was a time when uh, when uh, uh, the West, the United States, was uh, bubbling with the economy, similar like China right now. And uh, and that, that that movie was representing I mean, some sort of fear of, of people who are following a big stream, but they they don't know what what is going to happen. They are building something, but they are not sure what exactly they are building. Okay, so um, what is that here? So. What I wanted to show you is that uh, when I left Poland, uh, almost 10 years ago, I went to, to work in Cyprus. Cyprus is a place like uh, with the capital of Nicosia, which was divided by two with a wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a beautiful ancient city, and the city is divided by two, exactly. It's an old uh, Renaissance plan of, of a circle. They divided by two between Turkey and Greece, and they cannot uh, move freely from one place to another. I was working then as an architect and learning, and then from there I moved to to Japan, and uh, I started working with uh, with, uh, with uh, Toyo Ito, 
I made friends with uh, with uh, the people working there who were working like crazy. You? This is me at this time here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 those are uh, colleagues, like uh, similar like you. <laughs> and uh, and this is Ito-san. I was uh, interviewing him because uh, I'm working also quite often as a as a journalist. I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, architectural writings, and uh, so I make uh, I make this uh, friendship with uh, with Toyo Ito. And he was showing here the, his uh, sculpture. That was uh, that was a uh, kind of uh, a startup point to create the Taichung Opera in Taiwan, which is uh, an amazing building, but maybe too complicated a little bit for the crisis time. And uh, at the same time, uh, I was I was uh, researching about the Japan. How did, how is Japan in the recent days? And I come across with uh, this uh, this author, this book, which is uh, must reading. For uh, for you, it's it's translated to Chinese. Possible to buy it in, in Chinese uh, bookstores. The the book name is uh, Dogs and Demons: The Fall of uh, Modern Japan, and it's talking about uh, uh, also about the bubbling uh, uh, time of, uh, of Japan when the when the economy was was uh, just white and uh, and uh, how did they cover everything with the concrete? And those informations are uh, are actually not very uh, disclosure in, uh, in in Japan, but uh, but the author he's Alex Kerr, he's American guy, but half half Japanese. He was growing up there, and he made this fantastic book, which is saying step by step how it happened and why it happened. And uh, for now, this book could be a great reference book. What kind of mistakes uh, the the country like China can avoid right now? When you are an uh, architect, where you are, where you're working as a as a builder of uh, of, the, of the big part of the world, right? Uh, when I came to China first time, I uh, moved from Japan here. I went to Kunming, and uh, in Kunming, uh, I didn't even go to Kunming. So I, I went to Shanghai. I was living in Shanghai. Uh, one day, I got a phone call from Kunming. Come tomorrow. <laughs> we give you the, the job from tomorrow. That's going to be uh, you're going to be a manager, and uh, you're going to work on the revitalization of uh, new strip in Kunming, east, west, or north, south. I don't remember exactly. It was a, it was a big thing. I asked how is it possible. I don't even speak a word in Chinese, and uh, and I have no idea about this sort of big scale project. I was working on the small scale project. He's like, no, you just come. You are in work. We're gonna give you the money. I went to internet. I check what is that, and it turns out that uh, this is a, a big, uh, a actually a disaster, and because the people are protesting, and they they cannot go, they can they don't want to leave the houses, but but they are forced to do that. Uh, I had to refuse this project. I I refuse. Maybe that was a good money for me. Maybe that was uh, splendor, maybe fame. A great famous architect right now. If I take it, I have empty buckets. And uh, and but it was easy because uh, I had some experience from Japan. So so I went to the to, to Beijing, and I found a fantastic office, really fantastic office, uh, uh, with a new branch in uh, in Beijing. Uh, this is Morten Holm, the Danish guy, very clever architect, very well organized. Uh, who moved here to China together with his uh, with his family, and start the business uh, uh, under the umbrella of uh, of AL office. Uh, this is me at this time, and this is my my colleague. We were starting from the very small office, only four people, and uh, evolving slowly. It was a branch, so the main office was much more people, but we were only like four people. Then employed more and more, and this is one of the first projects I made in China. It was not a green project because uh, it was still impossible at this time, it was 2010. Well, it was possible in 2010, but our client was really focused on the, on the great looking of buildings, on sustainable buildings. So, uh, but uh, this guy, he was really, really, really into the green buildings and he was actually spending 90% of energy forcing to, to do, and I think I learned uh, I got a lot of spirit from this guy. 
I, after one year working with him, I felt like he gave me a lot of uh, force to really, to really push towards the, the, the more sustainable buildings. But unfortunately, there was a very, very bad situation because we came across with the Samaraj Memorial project, and uh, the well, Samaraj Memorial. The, this, this is existing building. It, it, it is already created in Tianjin, mm -hmm. but. Uh, my problem with this building, why I refused to work with this building, was a past of uh, was uh, history, the, the Samaraj history, which is Samaraj is uh, you know Samaranji, mm -hmm. which is a great person, very welcome in China. Mm -hmm. I personally I had to refuse uh, attempting the project because uh, because I came across this information that that the great Samaranji in 1974 he was a fascist. In '74, <laughs> it was already 25 years after, uh, almost 30 years after the war. So I refused, and I said, like, uh, Morten to to the to the president, we we need to change something in this project because we are promoting actually something which is related with fascism itself. But Morten was uh, he had a different mind. He was uh, he was more con more concentrated on on taking this project as a great opportunity and created it green. I said, like, it, it doesn't matter for me if it's green or it's blue or red. Uh, it's, it's a project that is commemorating the, the memory of the fascists. So I'm not taking that. Well, it finished up in a very bad way because, uh, because uh, after a few struggles and situations, uh, right now, after a few years, I'm already like, fully released with the bad emotions and everything that happened. But, uh, but I, had, uh, I had a situation with, uh, with the manager of the office, of, uh, sorry, of the project of Samaranj, when we were not discussing the issues. We were, th there was some, some tension between us. There was a tension which was growing, but we were kind of keeping silent. We, we never exp expressed that. And you know how it's finished up. Yes. We had a physical fight. We had a physical fight in the office. Yes. And and that's why I called it dynamic strategies. This was this was uh, this was for me the, the one of the biggest lessons. Talk. Because it will lead to the very bad situation at the end. If you don't release the bad spirits from inside. Because this this picture I took I took right after the fight, right after the fight. See, it's it's hopeless. People like this, they don't know what happened. Uh, I also so I uh, I had to I had to leave the office. They they were also very bad. Okay, that's that was that was a big lesson for me. And Did I you said, drink I before fight? I don't drink. I don't drink. No. no. Uh, that was, that was <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so then, then I start to search for, for another like strategies. How can I uh, how can I force the the, 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 the architecture? Because uh, I forgot to say that uh, I wouldn't do this presentation at the office, but uh, the couple of people, Dillis and some other uh, people, they asked me how actually how did I inf try to influence the, the reality. Maybe I'm a little bit like like talkative sometimes, and uh, so so I list these strategies to tell you like what was my uh, my approach, how 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 were my approaches to to that. So then very quickly I left to Taiwan. I was uh, researching about the the, the samurai because uh, it's related with ta Taiwan somehow. Okay. Um, and then I came back to, to to China again. I said like no, this cannot be finished like this. I have to I have to do something more. So. So I start with the scientific and DIY strategies, which were requiring not being in the office, just I'm, I have my savings and uh, I have uh, some people and uh, we can do the collaboration and we can create something. And we decided to do the, with uh, this guy, um, who is a Swiss uh, um, farmer, he was studying farming, uh, make uh, adaptations of the roofs of the of the Beijing hutongs and cover it with the, with the plantations of food. 
the food, uh, the plantations, they were supposed to uh, use the food wastes from the households of the, of, the, of the restaurants, of the houses, everywhere. Because in China, people, they are wasting a lot of food, which is going to the trash. It can be a fertilizer for the, for the, for the growing plants. So we started to work. It was, uh, we had already like 50 or 60 people. We were working extensively on, for, for a few weeks to build the prototype of, uh, of, uh, of the dome on the roof and then uh, we also we cut the the couple of uh, barrels for the for the water for the plantations and uh, we create a couple of domes like this they were covered and uh, this this was uh, my part I was doing some some uh, wind analysis and force analysis the also the the joints how they they would, would they make it was very low cost idea but then uh, uh, I was already out of of, uh, of Beijing. I had to I had to escape, and I will tell you why. Uh, then uh, this idea evolved in something big, in something really really big. Uh, they they start doing that on the, the Beijing Design Week, and uh, Jonas, the Swiss guy, um, he got the grant from the uh, from the embassy. It was a uh, few hundred thousand uh, quai, not much, but for this issue it was it was well enough. And they made the fruit loop. So as you see, you have a plantation, and uh, this this the plantation is giving the, the cooking, and then the wastes are again they are they are making the, the plantations. The fishes are also in, involved in that in that system. Well, so those are some informations here from uh, from the fruit loop how it was evolving like in the in the later stages. But then, as I said, like I didn't really I didn't really. If, uh, Continue with this because uh, because just when we were doing experiments with these domes and with the with the urban farming, uh, I got the, the information uh, that the Samaranch Memorial is uh, at the opening. So me and and uh, some of uh, artists from from Canada, we went to to Tianjin to for this opening with uh, with a diplomatic gift to the to the museum. Because, uh, as I mentioned before, the dynamic strategy doesn't work, and it's not a good idea. And this is not something worth promoting. But we thought that maybe uh, diplomacy is a good idea. Well, we arrived in the morning when the opening started. There was a lot of uh, very important people at the opening. But we were not welcome. I don't know why, because they didn't know who we are. But uh, the volunteers, they, they just they wanted to push us out. But uh, we managed to get through. And uh, and we had uh, we had two frames with the big uh, uh, like uh, pictures of uh, of Samaranch here. This is Samaranch, and we wanted to give this uh, these pictures for the museum as a gift because they don't talk about that. They only talk about the good things. So we wanted to to give it to to uh, to the to the museum. And uh, so yes, this is this is me here, and this is uh, the secret police officer, and some people from the from the summer ranch. They told me that, uh, that I'm going to have a big problems. <laughs> so uh, so I quickly escaped Beijing. <laughs> I escaped Beijing, and I went to to the mountains. I was in the mountains trying to 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 contact. But uh, after a few months, I realized that uh, this strategy also doesn't work. The diplomacy actually is, is sometimes more dangerous than, uh, than dynamic uh, approaches. And um, so I started with the business. I thought like maybe, maybe business is a solution. Maybe I should open my own business, you know. Me, my business, firm, architecture, clients. No one is telling me like what to do <laughs> and so on. I'm just having clients and directly doing what would I dream about with the clients. So I start uh, like uh, with some people. Uh, Chelsea was uh, also for a while was was a part of uh, of the team. There was also the, the very good architect from uh, from Toyo Ito and uh, another Spanish architect and um, and some Polish architect. There was, there was five or six people. So well, we we were we were trying to do that under umbrella of. of uh, of uh, Sendes office, uh, we got the space in uh, 
in the campus university at the beginning uh, there was a lot of promises uh, we wanted to scope to, to cover this uh, this spectrum of, uh, of uh, design and architectural issues parametric design DIY sustainable building structural analysis sustainable solutions lead architecture for humanity and a couple of more things but uh, but it didn't work. After half a year, it turns out that uh, senders cut everything. They said like we are not interested anymore. And uh, till today, I don't know the reason why. Maybe they thought that we are not good enough for them. And that's how I, I moved to uh, well, those are the strategies here, business strategies. And uh, I was still trying after that uh, with with another offices. I think my last approach was uh, in, in Chongqing when I went to to CMCU, an engineering company. I don't know if you know this company. It's a it's a huge. They have they have a big tower in the city center. They have like a 2,000 people there, and they are very old because they start in 70 something, I think. And uh, they proposed me that they give me a team of the people. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of uh, parametric designs and everything. Well, after uh, two months of negotiations, I finally I, I went there, and uh, and uh, I start to talk with the manager, and I ask him like, so what are we gonna work? On? And he said like, we're gonna work on uh, Fushin Lake Biological Research Center. I said like, okay, so uh, master plan, please. He gave me the master plan, and it looks like this. I don't know if you know the story behind the, the Fushin Lake. Fushan Lake a uh, couple of years ago uh, was Fushan Lake uh, was uh, was full, but there is only a couple of, of small villages around the around the lake, and then uh, the government gave the land uh, to the to the developers to start building, and then it turns out that something like 100 uh, uh, firms planning to build something in this forest around the lake. People went on the street. They said, like, no way, mostly with people from Kuna. And this way, it turns out that the uh, government changed it and said, like, only 10, only 10, uh, uh, 10 projects can be done around the lake, and they have to be related with uh, nature, with uh, nature. I think it was a very good idea. And, uh, and this company, they wanted to, to make this project. OK, so they make a biological research center. And I don't know if you see here, this is Biological Research Center. I took a closer look and I said to the manager that, hey, this has nothing to do with Biological Center. This is a regular urban design of the dwellings, urban plan for the residential, hotels, resorts, uh, swimming pools, and uh, shopping malls, and so on. But uh, there is nothing. He said, no. No, it's not. I said, yes, it is. Come on. We have an argument. And at the end, he said, like, actually, you're right. We want to cheat. We want to cheat. And I said, like, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> we want you to go for the meeting and uh, represent us. <laughs> and uh, so I made only this small, small, very small project. Like, how would I see the, the development of Fushan and Wu? Uh, and uh, the developers were not very happy with, with this work because they purely said that. They don't mind about sustainable design. They just want a big, flashy, lighty entertainment. <laughs> I couldn't do it, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, so I moved to the small strategies. I, I, I named it small strategies, and uh, this diagram is representing what I think it's a, it's a small strategies. Uh, well, if you if you do only like this, like one spot. That uh, that actually that doesn't change anything, but if you if you take all of these things, you don't look at this one. You take all of these things like and think like people are doing these small steps like this here. One person is doing this. One person is doing that. One person is doing that. If it's enough, if it's big enough, then you will say you will say, wow, they create gradient. They create something which is. You know, like a, like you look on the on the TV screen, you see the the image, but if you look closer, closer, it's made from the small pixels. So that's that's what I call uh, s s small acts of, of resistance. 
very small things. But if you multiply it times hundred, thousand, million, we need evolutions, evolutions that slowly evolve into sustainable design. And uh, uh, I have a friend. He's he's a he's a writer, and uh, he, he recently he made this book. It's going to be also in available in China, hopefully. It's talking. It's a good recommendation if you have a good memory to, to memorize small acts of resistance. is a, a nice reading, and it's talking about how people are really approaching the big things with the small steps. How you can how you can do that. Well, the the last strategy that uh, I will I will uh, cover with uh, with this speech today is uh, art and uh, maybe uh, writing. After after I made the, the small strategies. Uh, I made a couple kind of uh, performance. I met the guy whose name was John, and I was on the way to, to Tibet. And uh, I met him in the train, and then we went together to see the, the big peak. And this is him. His name is John. That's so cute. Really? Yes. <laughs> Good. Yes. And. Uh, this is John, and he is doing uh, the, 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 the buggy performance. Because if you don't have anything, as you see, like I passed through all the strategy here, business, diplomacy, dynamic, uh, but at the end you, you don't have anything, you are naked, only body remains. So the only action that you can take is you can work with your body. And that's it. Uh, yes, I think this is this is it. So, backing to, to this one, why I put it at the end to emphasize that uh, if you're thinking about uh, how did I manage to, to change something around me, is the way I'm acting right now. Because the information that I generate right now finish up inside your minds, like Yatsagambu inside the caterpillar. Thank you very much. Yeah.